who the vice president was. Okay, so they're, they're not teaching the reality of what's going on in the world. I sit there with my children. We have discussions about politics and debates, and what's going on in this country is just pathetic. How the dollar has come off the gold standard, and how these people are entitled to. I have. I'm a real estate investor. I own eight houses, and I do Section Eight programs. And when my tenants don't pay me, I take my children along with me to court. Okay, and I have them in the mediation room asking the attorney on the other side, "How come my mom has to pay rent, and these Section Eight people stopped paying rent to her?" Why are they entitled to sit there for free and do nothing? All these entitlement programs, don't get me wrong. I would love for my children to have free college, and I would love for this to be a world of unicorns and rainbows. But the reality is Hillary Clinton, the young woman, know that she is going to sell our soul the same way she did in Benghazi, covering things up, the same way she's done in her marriage, covering things up, and the same way that the, these women, young, think that they're going to get something from nothing from Bernie. So hmm. what else could she promise them? I have a... Well, uh, uh, well right now, Karen, thank you for the call. I mean, right now, the, the Clinton campaign is in free fall, without question. I mean, she didn't get... She didn't get beat in New Hampshire. She got trounced in New Hampshire, and it's only going to get worse. Brian on line one is listing on WKZO in Michigan. Brian, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Brian. Hi. i got to apologize for the millennial generation. I think somewhere along the lines in civics class, uh, they might have missed the point that it's a pursuit of happiness and not a right that you're born with. I think too many kids these days just don't know what the value of a hard worked, hard earned dollar is, and they're just simply lazy. You know, they they were lied to and said that oh, you can do this and you can do that, and they don't expect to put the work in to get it, and it's disgusting. You know that that. Thank you, Brian. That's an interesting point, and also, don't don't you think that there's a difference between what people perceive as happiness and sometimes just being content? Someone, I think. We, we, we feel content after a, a, a full day of work, but you're productive, you contribute. There's nothing wrong with having, I think it's healthy to have a job where it's just work, whatever it may be, working in a warehouse or working in a restaurant, whatever it may be. And then at least at the end of the day, there's a sense you're content that, that you put in a full day's work, and they mistake that with with what Brian said, which is happiness, and they're entitled to be happy, as if if they don't have to work and everything's given to them, that would equal happiness. Deborah on line nine is listening on WABC in New York. Deborah's up on the Savage Nation. Hello, Deborah. Hello. You had said, or you had a caller before that said that once two income families, um, you know, became like the standard, the socioeconomic decline of the family began, and I'd like to argue that taxes are actually what made women have to go to work and and did begin and did spur the decline of the family. And it was the Great Society of 1968, and I remember it well, because my father was a, we were a one-income family, we lived here in New York, and when my dad went to work, he all of a sudden started to see more and more federal taxes. And New York was a high-tax state, and my area, Nassau County, was a very high-tax area. And my mom had to go to work in order to help get enough money to keep food on the table and the mortgage. So it wasn't so much that it was all women's liberation, because that was not my household at all. It was a fact that we had to put my mom to work in order to keep us going. And I think that bec- that became the decline of the family. I agree with the guy that the decline of the family came, but not because women wanted to go to work but because they had to go to work. Because they were for it. Thank you, David. You know, that's an excellent point. And the more of uh, the people that say, you know, trust the government and they were involved with your kids, you know, you're exactly right, Deborah. It, and it's sad. It's become more the parents have less say in many households, and they just turn over their children to the schools and uh, and feel that, you know, those school, those, uh, school officials know what's best. Let's go to line four. Richard is listening on WMAL in Washington, D.C. Richard, this is John DiPietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hello, John. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, I'm a t- I've taught for 35 years, 
and uh, I have four children, and I've, I've seen so many changes uh, from the time I started teaching until now with the helicopter parents. I'm retired now, but the parents who who shield their child from everything, and, and they never they never take the side of, of anybody but their children. So their children feel that they are entitled always to be right. They're entitled always to be safe. Uh, I, the school I teach at is, is near a, 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 a downtown <clears throat> university. And, uh, of course, you know, pedestrians in the crosswalk are supposed to have the right of way. But right. that's not what they do. They just, they'll, be, they'll be texting and walking yep. and just walk right smack out in front of you without even looking because it's your job to keep them safe. That's another entitlement. Mm. And I, 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 I almost levitated because as I'm, I'm driving in now to pick my daughter up and I saw a Bernie sticker, a um, bumper sticker in front of me. <laughs> and, and it was a college age student yep. who I guess wants some more free stuff. I, you know, Richard, thank you for the call. Uh, you know, they probably do want more stuff and we'll see what happens in the debate tonight. one 855 Four hundred Savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two. This is John DePietro sitting in for Doctor Michael Savage. Your phone calls ahead. This is the Savage Nation. It's been noted often by pundits that the tone of our politics hasn't gotten better since I was inaugurated. In fact, it's gotten worse. That there's still this yawning gap between the magnitude of our challenges and the smallness of our politics. Which is why in my final State of the Union address, and in the one before that, I had to acknowledge that one of my few regrets is my inability to reduce the polarization and meanness in our politics. That is President Obama. Yeah, that is a regret. Polarization. Well, you're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. Dr. Savage will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, we'll continue to take your phone calls at one 855 Four hundred Savage one eight five five four hundred seven two eight two, and as always, visit the website michaelsavage dot com. Especially learn more about Doctor Savage's new ebook, Diseases Without Borders, and that's what we're facing right now. Diseases Without Borders. You can find out more about it by going to the website, and that is michaelsavage dot com. You know, um, the Drudge Report is also always a must read. There's a funny story on the the drug report that I, I just came across, and that is, before we go back to your calls, do you know a, the sale of adult diapers is about to take off? Sale of adult incontinence garments in the U.S. could equal those of baby diapers in a decade. They're trying to say real people in their ads are going to say, hey, I have bladder leakage, and it's no big deal, said the head of Kimberly Clark. Growth in the adult diaper market is outpacing that of every other paper-based household staple in the U.S. How about that? Adult diapers are the new black. Who would have thought? All right, let's go back to your calls, starting with Allison is on line 7, calling from KKAT in Utah. Allison, this is John DePietro, and you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Hi, I'm I'm a Rep- Republican and a conservative, and I would never vote for Hillary. Um, I think where she goes wrong with women is um, she's so um, deceptive with the emails, her lies and deception. She can't even look at the camera when she's talking about it. Also, she said, what difference does it make about Benghazi? And also, she supports abortion. Um, half the babies that are aborted are female babies. Every life matters, and she just doesn't care. I think that's a really big point for women um, and why they don't trust her. What do you think, Allison, of um, of Hillary and her camp, specifically Madeleine Albright, saying that for someone like yourself, there's a special place in hell for women that don't support other women? I think it's absolutely disgusting. I think there's a special place in H-E double hockey sticks for people who destroy the life, destroy life and destroy babies. Well, and not only that, Allison, but don't you think, I mean, thank you for the call, Allison. It, that's like a false way to get a vote. And it, uh, how do you think it played with the New Hampshire audience? Not that well. 
you know, that rally of Hillary, uh, I, I'm anxious to see them have those two on the stage again, right? Whether it be uh, Steinem with the feminists, oh, you know, the women, a lot of the women, they just like to go to the Bernie Sanders camp because that's where the, the boys are. But Madeleine Albright standing up there saying, special place in hell for women that don't vote for Hillary. Well, apparently, apparently they're not afraid of that. one 800 savage More of your phone calls coming up. This is John DePietro sitting in for Dr. Michael Savage. You're listening to The Savage Nation. The same applies to a Republican who, heaven forbid, might agree with me on a particular issue. Or if I said America's great decided to stand during a state of a union. It's not a controversial proposition. <laughs> you're, 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 you're not, you're not going to get in trouble. But, but the fact that that's hard to do that is, is a testament to how difficult our politics has become. That is President Obama. You're listening to the Savage Nation. This is John DePietro sitting in. For Dr. Michael Savage, Michael will be back tomorrow. In the meantime, you're welcome to call the program 1-855-400-SAVAGE, 1-855-400-7282. Visit the website, michaelsavage.com. How about right now? You could order Dr. Savage's new book, Diseases Without Borders. I mean, has there ever been, the doctor, talk about being ahead of the curve. Has there ever been a time that right now we are on the verge of yet another complete outbreak. We're now, what's the latest word? The first case of the Zika virus identified in Alabama. Now it is spread to 20 U.S. states, including District of Columbia. 59 cases reported in the U.S. All were infected abroad. And now we're finding out that apparently the Washington Post is reporting two women in the U.S., miscarriages due to the Zika virus. Again, you can read about it right there at the website. It's michaelsavage.com. You'll also see headlines, and also you can sign up, subscribe to the Savage Newsletter, all by going to michaelsavage.com. You're on Facebook? Great. Look for the Michael Savage Facebook page. Click like. It's Michael Savage on Facebook, and then follow the show on Twitter. It's A Savage Nation. On Twitter. Let's get back to your phone calls at 1 855 400 Savage. Caleb on line 8 is listening on WVNN in Alabama. Caleb, you're up on the Savage Nation. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, just listening to what you were talking about earlier with the uh, whole um, entitlement issue that we're facing right now. And I, I think kind of based off of what you're talking, uh, which you let us listen to with Obama's last soundbite, was talking about uh, th- this polarization that that's, you know, maybe his biggest downfall. I think that he really propelled that with making everyone feel like a victim. You you, you don't have to have, it, have had anything happen to you. You can just be born with maybe a certain color or what have you, but you are a victim because of that, and I think that that propels this whole entitlement. You know, we're we're owed something because we're a victim uh, in society, and uh, I just want to hear your thoughts on that. You know, it's funny, Caleb. You say that is Caleb. You know, all of we've the past two years. Think of all the shootings and the confrontations with police, and Caleb. Even when the details have then come out, you know, the after afterwards when we actually start to get the real facts. And the, and the details. And then you find out maybe the story didn't happen exactly a, as it had been, you know, presented. Maybe, maybe the person didn't have their hands up and say, don't shoot. Maybe they did charge at the police. Caleb, you know, do you ever hear anyone say, then go back and say, whether it be in Ferguson or whether it be in Baltimore or different parts of the country, does anyone ever go back and say, you know, in hindsight, maybe that person was not a victim, maybe they were in the wrong, and maybe they shouldn't have gone after the police or challenged the police or or got into a confrontation with police that way. Caleb, do you ever hear anyone ever say that? No, but what you do hear is, well, it may not have happened to Michael Brown that way, but it happens all over the, the country regardless.